Hello and welcome to SciPy Japan 2020. This is the presentation on how to use Optuna, uh, specifically hyperparameters, auto tuning to make performances sing with Optuna. So let me start by introducing myself, your speaker today. I actually do live here in Japan and I have been working for Preferred Networks, which is a deep learning company here in Japan, which also is very involved in open source. Previously, I was a contributor to the Chainer Deep Learning Framework, which some of you uh, might be familiar with. It was a precursor to PyTorch. But now I'm working on auto machine learning and specifically in Optuna for tuning hyperparameters. So for an overview of what we'll be talking about today, the first thing I'm going to start off with this is a light review of actually what are hyperparameters, where you find them, and uh, what it is that they actually do, and hopefully give you an idea of some other areas where there are important hyperparameters you might not have thought of before. After that, we'll take a glance at the code to see exactly how Optuna looks when it's put into code and what it does. And then we'll talk about the gears of the machine, how it is that Optuna does what it does, what are the components, so that you can get better performance for tuning your hyperparameters. And then finally, we'll talk about the bonus benefits of using a hyperparameter optimization program like Optuna. How this gives you more access to faster tuning and better insight into what the hyperparameters are doing. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what are hyperparameters. So hyperparameters, they basically control the behavior of the algorithms. They largely determine the performance, how well or badly the algorithms perform, and they're typically set manually. I think there's been a recent study that showed that about 80% of, of people using deep learning frameworks actually would just be manually setting the hyperparameters. And in his example of this below in the diagram, we can see that there's the number of layers that are used in a neural network, how many units are in each layer, are both good examples of hyperparameters. Many of my examples, since my company deals deeply, mostly with deep learning and it's become very important how hyperparameters in the deep learning world will apply to deep learning and machine learning, I want to make sure that I let those of you who are maybe not directly involved in that, who are involved in that and also other things, know that Optuna works for non-machine learning tasks with objective functions as well. So basically any program that's using Python, Optuna is a Python program, will be using uh, hyperparameters and can benefit from having them tuned if those are impacting the performance of the application. Some other examples that we've worked with have been LinPack parameters for compression, also database settings to get the best performance out of database. As another in-house example, we recently added uh, Optuna to Kupai for automatic tuning of the kernel launch parameters and found that it was significantly improved the performance. So to give a, a deep learning example, as I talked about, the hyperparameters often can determine the success or failure of an algorithm. So this is from uh, our participation in the Google Image Challenge, where the idea is to make bounding boxes for all of the identifiable salient objects within a picture. And you can see we have object detection with a bad threshold hyperparameter on the left where we get far too many bounding boxes and it blurs out the picture. And then after using hyperparameter tuning, we were able to find good thresholds for those hyperparameters. And now we nicely see each object cleanly outlined with one particular bounding box that identifies what that object is. But that seems like a fairly straight uh, forward example, but actually we see hyperparameters everywhere. So in this particular example, we talked about the suppression method for the bounding boxes, so we didn't have too many, and the suppression method and the suppression hep threshold as the hyperparameters in question. But even if you start at the picture, we have uh, hyperparameters of the augmentation method, the order, magnitude, image size we're going to use, the format, PNG, JPEG, if you use JPEG, then what decoder you use. Then in the detector model, uh, what model you're going to use, VGG, ResNet, NASNet, the kernel size, batch normalization, the number of FPN layers, 
And then within the network trainer, you have the batch size or the optimizer, whether you're using Momentum or Atom or other things, and the learning rate schedule or the learning rate itself. And then even uh, as you go down to the GPU level, then you have the FP16 or FP32, mixed precision, and the CUDA kernel parameters, which as we mentioned now in CUPI are automatically trained by Optuna. So with these things then, usually what people start with is they say, okay, I want to try these parameters and uh, set the learning rate, set the dropout, and then get an accuracy. And then take a look at that and say, okay, 0.6 accuracy is not very good. Try again, learning rate lower, dropout rate lower. Okay, accuracy of half, still not good. And then tune it again and try something else. But with the human making each of these evaluations, it takes time and there's waiting time between each of the trials and other things. So the primary goal of Optuna is to then automate this. So have Optuna do these selection uh, sampling of the hyperparameters for you automatically. So then it's able to quickly go through and try the various different stages. So generally we find that most people go through a hyperparameter evolution. First, as I said, mostly not tuning the hyperparameters, using some values that are the default values, or perhaps the values from the published paper that were recommended as the hyperparameter values, as opposed to finding out what's best for their particular data set or situation. And then the next stage is usually manually fidgeting with the hyperparameters to see if they can tune or improve performance by changing them. And then maybe getting a little organized, making an Excel sheet or something else and starting to do a grid search to explore the space. And then hopefully, and I hope after listening to this presentation, you'll be interested in taking the final step of using Optuna to have your hyperparameters tuned for you automatic, automatically. But let me give you a glance at the code so you can see what that would look like. The installation is fairly straightforward. Basically on Linux, it's just going to be a pip install Optuna. Uh, Mac OS is going to be pretty similar. And of course, Windows is always different because they have a different system prompt, but it's still just pip install Optuna. So inside of your code, the basic format is going to be to create import Optuna and then to create an objective function. So Optuna is a black box optimizer. It doesn't know what's happening inside of your code. So all it needs is a function that then returns an evaluation score. So your code then uh, crunches through, whether that's a deep learning code or impact parameters, whatever, and then gives back to Optuna some kind of an evaluation score to show how that trial actually went. So then we add two lines to say the study, uh, Optuna creates study to create it, and then optimize to show with the objective function and the number of trials. And that's basically all that's required. So something you might have noticed here is that actually, if you look at this, it's all inside of all of the definition of the hyperparameter ranges and values and types is done within your actual code. Optuna is a define by run hyperparameter format. So in Optuna, all you need to do is use the existing Python code, including looping and other things, which makes it fairly straightforward to do the troubleshooting and to see how that's going to go and makes it easy to define the hyperparameters. For a more traditional hyperparameter tuner, as you see on the left, the existing frameworks oftentimes will require you to learn a specialized syntax for that particular hyperparameter and will require the definition outside of it. It's pre-compiled, if you will, and it makes it less intuitive and requires a, a stronger learning curve and uh, harder to troubleshoot than using it within the Python language. So let's take a quick look at what exactly that could look like for a Python code. So we go PyTorch, import PyTorch. We create it in an objective function. Uh, sample the parameters so that we're defining how the parameters are done. Return their accuracy so that Optuna knows how good that trial was. And then we optimize it, making a study. So that was a little bit fast. Uh, for more details, obviously, you can go to our website and see exactly how to do that in your particular things. We have a number of examples for various different frameworks and applications. So moving on, let's talk about the gears of the machine, how Optuna does what it does. So there's two basic components. There's the sampling strategy, which is what decides what are the values that are used and when they're used. 
And then there's the pruning strategy, which decides whether the trial is promising or not. So the samplers then are deciding where to look within the hyperparameter space for the best results. So this is important because if you look, for instance, for Optuna versus a random search, on the left side we have a random search, which is just picking points at random throughout the space and might not get you the best results very quickly. But most of the algorithms within Optuna, the sampler algorithms, use Bayesian optimization or other techniques in order to focus in on the areas where they're getting the best results. So on the right side, we can see a diagram where looking for the minimum value, Optuna is clearly focusing in on this area and the samplers are finding more results where the best results are. So this helps you to find better hyperparameters in a faster period. So we have several kinds of samplers that are available with Optuna. Um, they are the model-based ones would be Tree Structured Parts and Estimator. Uh, don't worry, these names won't be on the test, which is a Bayesian optimization based on kernel fitting. We have Gaussian process uh, samplers, which is also Bayesian optimization, but this time based on Gaussian processes, which has a better ability to find correlations. And then also covariant matrix adaptation evolutionary strategy, which is a, a meta heuristics algorithm for uh, optimizing over continuous space and does best for high dimensional with a large number of trials. There are other methods available as well. If you want to do just a, a random search that's available within Optuna, or if you want to do a grid search to prove that you've covered the entire space methodically, or also if you wanted to find your own algorithm to do how the sampling for your particular exercise or algorithm requires. So one of the things that I find a little ironic is that now we have a choice of samplers, which is a meta hyperparameter now. So let's take a look at how they compare. I'd like to help you to, the default value for what is used as the sampler is the tree structured parts and estimator, TPE. But here's a bit of an algorithm cheat sheet for you in case you want to know what you should use and want to go beyond just the default value, which will good, good, give good performance on most cases. So if you have more than a thousand trials um, and you have a continuous space, then CMAES is going to give you the best results as you get over a thousand different trials. If you have a structured or choice non-continuous space or you have less than a thousand parameters, then if they're correlated, Gaussian processes might be able to find the best hyperparameters, but if they're not correlated, then the tree structure parts and estimate, or TPE, is going to be the best. And as a default value, this can handle most cases. So next, let's talk about the pruners, which is basically stopping trials early. So the pruning strategy is that as the algorithms are going through, due to the values that they've selected, the hyperparameters, they might not be coming anywhere close to the best values. And in that case, it can be better to terminate those trials early so that time can be better spent on other estimations to find better values. And there are a number of different ways that pruning strategies can be used, and generally this enables you to find better hyperparameters more quickly. This is very effective, it can be twice as fast as finding the best hyperparameters without pruning. Here's a specific example we did on the Street View House numbers data set, and uh, using successing ha successive halving as a pruner was able to find very quickly the best result within the same time. So pruning requires actually giving intermediate results from your algorithm, which means that there needs to be some both some feedback to Optuna on how the results are going, and also there needs to be a way then for that algorithm to objective function to terminate early and gracefully, saving any intermediate values that are needed. So this can require a little more coding, but there are integrations available for a number of platforms. So this can make it much easier to use, and there's more details on this on the Uptuna documentation. We already have integrations available for PyTorch, Lightning, Ignite, FastAI, TensorFlow, Keras, MXNet, and Allen NLP, and are continuing to make more of them, and welcome contributions as well if there's an integration that you think uh, would be beneficial for other users as well. So next, let's talk about the bonus benefits. So these are the things that as you use a 
program like Optuna that gives you automation are things that help you to understand the, the parameter space much more clearly so that you can do better searches for what hyperparameters you want to find. So one of these benefits is the ability to scale up. So as we talked about in the original example, we had a person manually tuning one uh, particular set of hyperparameters, seeing the result, and then tuning the next, and then tuning the next. But one of the benefits of using Optuna is that scaling up to multiple nodes or multiple threads is very easy. All it requires is access to basically a common database. And then from there, you can access all of those different trials. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So we first start out with going ahead and have Optuna create study, give the study a name, and have the common storage that I mentioned. In this case, we're using SQLite to give a database. And if the database exists, we'll go ahead and load it as opposed to creating a new one. Then as a distributed example, we go ahead and execute this code on six different nodes or CPUs or GPUs or other things. And then all of them can run in parallel. And this gives a very fast way to find the answer for what would be the best value for this. In one of my tutorials that I did for Optuna, we actually used all of the people who attended the session, we used Colabs and a commonly accessed database to search the space live in session much faster than any single computer could have done to find the best result there within a few minutes, what normally would have taken at least an hour to do over multiple over a single thread. So this provides asynchronous parallelization of trials. The different nodes don't even need to be of the same caliber or um, specification, and it's near linear scaling. Uh, the more nodes you're able to provide, the more quickly you're able to get to the best value and answer that you're looking for. So another benefit of having a hyperparameter optimizer is that it enables you to see visualization of what your hyperparameter space looks like. Here is one example of this is a plot contour. So in this case, we're trying to maximize the value. And you can see that for the, uh, this particular one, for the sample split of about, at about 0 0.5, below that, we're getting better objective values. And also you can see here that Optuna is tending to sample more from this area in order to get the better values. And this will tell you in a way how it looks and what you sh where the best values are to be found. One of the most recent things that we've just added to Optuna this summer in Optuna 2.0 is uh, hyperparameter importance. So as I mentioned before, there are a lot of hyperparameters and maybe some that you haven't even thought about before that can really influence the, the values that you get out of your studies. But just because you have a hyperparameter automated tuner doesn't mean that we suggest you try to tune all of those hyperparameters simultaneously. The curse of dimensionality is real, and if you try to optimize 20 hyperparameters simultaneously, progress is going to be very slow because the dimensionality of the spaces is, is so large that it will be difficult to find optimum values in a short period. But that said, now that you know that these are hyperparameters that could matter to the importance, how do you decide which ones you should tune? Maybe five or so seems to be a reasonable number of hyperparameters from our experience. So hyperparameter importance allows you to do an initial trial that will randomly uh, sample throughout the study space and then tell you which of those hyperparameters have the most effect on your particular study. So in this particular case, we've done a hyperparameter importance on a standard PyTorch MNIST uh, handwritten character recognition task. And as you can see, as for those of you familiar with, hyper, with deep learning will probably have guessed, the most important hyperparameter is the learning rate at 0.44%. Then this was a, a surprise to me. The next most important hyperparameter actually wasn't what optimizer, SGD, or Atom, or other things was picked, but it was actually the number of units in the first layer, with the hyperparameter only almost half as important as the learning rate in the overall performance. Then after that did come the optimizer, whether it was Atom or Momentum or SGD. And then next after that was the dropout, the dropout on the first layer not the laughter layers. 
The other import parameter hyperparameters were not as important, um, still had some benefit up until the activation function, which many people talk about activation functions, but in this particular case, it was not critical to the overall performance. So this helps you to see where you should be spending your compute time to which hyperparameters you should be focusing on to make the best use of the computation you have available to you. So that concludes my presentation on Optuna and how to use it within deep learning frameworks and other Python programs. For more information, you can take a look at our website at optuna.org, or for those of you who want to directly look at the code um, and see how to work with it, it's uh, github.com at Optuna. Thank you very much for your interest in Optuna, and uh, we hope to hear from you in pull requests, stars, or other involvement in our project, and we hope that Optuna is helpful for you. Thanks for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the rest of SciPy Japan.